Good morning, this is Karen O'Brien and I am doing a series of uh, mapping videos to try to split this up into kind of better, more reasonable chunks of data. So you should see this project again and again because it's a nice little project to map. Um, the first video I did today was using results from Mapper. So it talks about how to import the shapefiles that Mapper creates and map them and set up the styles and get them ready for mapping with, within QGIS. As you can see, I just add these straight to my, uh, right under my project so that I can use my data and everything else and it's all on the same map. It makes it very nice so that I can see where I might have problems with my data versus my results. Um, so this is results from Mapper video. It's already a separate video. And this is results from ASCII. So what happens if your project is too big and it won't open in Mapper? Sometimes you try to open your project in Mapper and you get a, um, a, a message that the, the project is too big, you run out of memory. Or maybe you just don't want to use Mapper because you only want one data. You don't want to waste your time with Mapper. So let's do this. First, I'm going to just put my cursor on here because this is where I want my data to go. And then from up here, I have many projects or many data files in my Peralta project that are uh, capable of mapping because they have this format of data. They have uh, grid element, X coordinate, Y coordinate, and the D is depth. The, if you want to know what these files are, you can look them up in the data input manual in chapter five. That'll tell you what's in the data. But it's nice because they don't have any, nothing's in the way. So if I use this add data manager, I can add a delimited text. So I just go and grab the project folder and I hit the D key. It'll take me right down to the one I want. I want the depth fp.out. That is maximum depth on the floodplain. And let's just talk about how you set this up. So your file format, it's a custom delimiter and it's space delimited. We want to, there's no header, so I don't have to delete any headers. I don't have any field names. As you can see, the data starts straight at the field at one. I do want to trim the fields. I do want to discard the empties and detect field types. This doesn't work here because there's no field names. X coordinate is field one, Y coordinate is field, th sorry, X coordinate is two, Y is three, as you can see clearly down here. And you will need to choose the coordinate reference because the data is not, um, it doesn't have any way for the computer to tell what coordinate system you're using. So if you don't have your coordinate system picked out or you're just adding the data to a blank map, you want to come in here and maybe filter. I have this is my New Mexico. If I filter it, I can pick from any of this list down here. But because I've already been using these commonly, they're already in here. And I click OK, and that will set the coordinate. But I already did this a couple times, so it's already set. Uh, then I click Add. That will add the data. Um, over here, let's see. I can't do anything yet because I'm in here. Yeah, can't do anything yet. I want to add one more layer. So that was the maximum depth. Let's do the maximum combined depth. So I come back in here and I hit D. This time I want this file, which is the maximum combined depth from the channel and the floodplain. Everything should already be set up. So all I have to do is set field two and field three and add it. And then once it's completed, I close it. Obviously, if you have a bigger project, that's gonna take a bit more time. Now I can turn off the results from Mapper because I won't be needing those. And you can see here, this data is pretty useless. I can use maybe the ID tool with it to ID specific ones, but not only is it useless, uh, it's going to really slow things down if I keep using this point data. So I want to just rasterize it. It's a very simple process. Over here in the processing toolbox, I can rasterize the data. If you can't see your processing toolbox, you can click this button right here. Um, what I did with mine is I, I docked all three of my uh, commonly used layers panels together on a single panel. And it's pretty easy to do that. You just take your panel that you want to dock and you wait until the whole panel turns blue and then you drop it. 
and then you can quickly change between the three panels and you can manage them. Now that will stay like that for this entire project. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. That way the data's stuck in here. I can't, I won't lose it if I accidentally crash out the program. But I probably won't do that because this process is fairly simple. So, on a processing toolbox, you wanna search for rasterize. And these are ones that I commonly use. I wanna use the Saga rasterize tool. It's a very nice tool for this particular type of mapping. And as you can see, because I was that was my active layer, it's automatically loaded here. I wanna set the attribute to field four because that was the depth field. And attribute is fine, first is fine. Uh, method for lines is zero, zero. These aren't important. This is default, this is important. We need to set this to one of the layers on the map. So I wanna use a calculate from a layer and I wanna set it to the grid layer. Okay, set it to the grid layer so that when it's only gonna give you the extent of the map. The cell size is 30 and the fit is, uh, let's see, the fit is cells, always cells. It's important because it'll offset it by half a grid element if it's not cells. And then you can use a temporary or you can um, or you can apply a or you can save it to a file. Let's just use temporary for now. I'm going to click run and what it does is it will name it as the same name as this that, that we did. Oh no, it just calls it rasterize because it's temporary. But you can quickly see how well it worked and you can quickly style it to um, 0, 0.0, let's say 0 0.05 and pseudo color. And then we'll use the blue because I like the blue for water, it's nice and apply. And you can see here that, hold on a second, clip out of range values and click okay. I'll come on 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 and apply, I classify, clip out of range values, apply, and OK. So that clips things that are, uh, you know, takes out a little bit of that noise from the rainfall and gives you the, just the deeper depths and you can manipulate that however you want. Again, that was double click, go to symbology, pseudo color, let's just 0.1 just to kind of clip a few more out, classify, apply, and then you can see that it gets you anything greater than 0 0.1 feet of depth. Now, uh, that was the simple way to rasterize it if you don't have, um, but if you're gonna do this again and again, because you know, you're going to be map mapping and modeling this, you're going to be making changes to the model, you might be modeling five or six different scenarios. So if you're going to be doing this again and again and again, you might want to set up a model for it. So I'm going to remove this one, remove the layer. And I'm going to try that again, except this time I'm going to use a model. Now, for whatever reason, my model doesn't show up. So I have to open it from here, uh, open a model. And in this case, I have created a model called rasterized results. So I can't just run it from here because for whatever reason, it doesn't like to load there. Uh, so what I have here is an input layer. This is input data that will be input into the model. The input layer is the uh, depth field. And what it is, is a point geometry. It only allows a point geometry and it's mandatory. You have to have this to run the model. And I get that input from over here. And the extent layer, this will set the extent of the um, of, of the, the grid. You have to save this. And the, the reason I had to add this, I couldn't just call the grid layer, is because every time I change projects, it kind of requires this data. Click OK. Rasterize results is the same thing we saw with that rasterize button, except I used input from here and the extent from here and I called the cell size from the computational domain. 
Now, if you are always using this on the same project, that seems to be a very good way to do this. If you change projects, you might have to update the computational domain layer because this code is specific to this um, project and it's specific to this coordinate system. Now click OK and then cells. Okay, everything else stays the same and you don't have to remember that. And you don't have to add that information again and again for because for whatever reason this rasterize doesn't remember your previous input, which is unfortunate. Set the style right here. And you can see from here I um I use just a QML file for this, so you can just apply uh, tag that to any QML file you want, and then it has to be tied to the algorithm output from rasterize results and it's so it's input from here to set the style and then the output from this goes here and then this goes to your results and the results is just to temporary file or save so you need this output all right so let's test it if i click run right here I'm going to, this goes to grid layer automatically, or you have to choose it. This does remember where you were. That's the nice thing about this system. It does remember your choices. And this remembers your input layer. Um, actually, it probably didn't remember my input layer, so I'm just going to make sure that I tell it the right, because I added that again. Oh, here it is. Sorry. Yeah, right there. And this is my results and I click run, and it's gonna send it, make sure, I wanna actually make sure, sorry, I wanna make sure I'm on the depth map, because I want this to be the max combined. I'll click run, and we'll just wait for that to finish, because we're gonna do it again for the depth map. Okay, now I can do it again, except this time I want the maximum depth without the combined, and we'll just do this uh, max depth, 500 year dot s uh, I think it's s d a t s d a t whoops and run I hit a button on my computer maybe I can ah whatever and that one is also complete so close that and we don't need the modeler anymore so save uh, yes, and close it. And now you can see that, uh-oh, let's see. Oh, this thing's in the way. So we'll just uncheck that. And we don't really need this anymore, so you can remove it, but it's not going to hurt anything so long as it's not uh, turned on. It's not going to slow anything down so long as it's not turned on. And as you can see, I grouped everything into, into results. And so if you need to group something, you know, you just right click and you group it right here and then you name it. And then you can turn these on and off so that you can see your combined depth. Let's turn the channels off so you can see the difference between the two. So this is the maximum combined. You see it has a channel depth and this is the maximum without the channel depth. And again, um, if I open that up, I can clip the values that are out of range, uh, 0 0.0.1 0 .1 and apply. And I can also set these values to whatever you want. And that will be loaded in the QML style when you save that to that QML style. The next time you use a modeler, it would be updated automatically. Okay, so that's pretty much out. Uh, that's pretty much how you use ASCII data within Mapper. Now, the last way to map data for Flow2D is to use Crayfish and, or not Crayfish, it's, there's two tools. Uh, there's MDAL and there's Crayfish. And the MDAL is a mesh generator tool that will work with Flow2D. And Crayfish is just a way to modify, manipulate, and animate the data that's in MDAL, that's in the MDAL layers. Uh, that's its own video, and I already have a an extensive um, 
an extensive video on mapping with MDAL here on the map making packages on my website. So these are my training packages. This is the mapping with mapper and crayfish training package. And this is the download. If you come to the download, you can sort this by name and you'll get in QGIS tools, you'll get um, the stuff, information you need for map for uh, crayfish, a couple of Flow2D templates, which we'll do a video on later, uh, the models, the three models that I made, so you can take those models and um, try them out yourself. Let's do this. And the those layers uh, to do the styling, those styling data. Okay, so I'm going to shut the video down and try to do uh, the map, the model making video.